Hi, Tim here from The Tiger, and today it's a great pleasure to introduce a new sponsor, dmoney.com. Now, we all work with the banking industry. We've all had our problems, our interfaces, especially when it comes to sending money overseas. D-Money look like they've got a much better solution. It's a great pleasure to introduce the MD and co-founder of D-Money, Rasmeg Sri Seti. So, Mega, thank you for coming in and having a talk to us. I think a lot of people are going to be very interested in what you have to say. Uh, now, of course, a lot of us are very well aware of the financial system and the, the banking we've had in the past. How is D-Money different from the banking that we've been used to in the past? Well, for starters, Tim, thank you for having me here today and thank everyone you. at Tiger. It's a pleasure. Um, Welcome to the brick wall. <laughs> it's great to be here. Beautiful space. Um, so D-Money is uh, we're right now Thailand's leading and fastest growing fintech specializing in cross-border payments. So in terms of banking and what D-Money does is at the moment the niche service that we provide is international money transfers um, for personal reasons, for um, individual customers as well as businesses. And um, a core vision that we have is to really empower Thailand's fintech industry. But more than that, it's really to drive and transform financial services to making them simpler, frictionless, seamless, and just a better experience for customers. Well, as an, as there are plenty of expats out there and people who are traveling to Thailand at various times. and. In the past, we've sort of gone down to that uh, place with the, the yellow and black logos and we've done our transfers of money overseas and we always notice when the money gets to the other end, there's a lot of money missing. Mm. So all that uh, transfer and the rates and stuff doesn't seem to have any transparency at all. H how will D-Money change that? Well, I think you've hit the nail on the head, Tim. Um, so prior to D-Money coming into the market, we launched in 2018. And prior to um, our launch, customers or expats really only had two buckets of options, right? The first would be the formal channels um, like banks or money transfer operators, as you've mentioned. The other would be more informal, using a network of trust or traveling, carrying the money with you when you travel, etc. You know, the worst one uh -huh. was always like the credit card and trying to take money out ATM. from your bank in another country. Oh, that yeah. was hideous. Why? Well, was, uh, there was so much money you were losing that the Absolutely. rates... Absolutely, but not many people know that. And that's why I say, I ask you why, because there's so much lost in exchange rates. Yeah. That is, that is just not visible. Um, or, or, you know, a lot of times people may get intimidated with having to do the calculations then and there. But once you do it and you realize, really, I've lost a lot, not only in FX, but also hidden fees, right? So... Um, so coming back to, to this idea of uh, what was the experience for you like as an expat before? Well, it was always expensive. Okay. You know, if I had people sending me money or if we were doing transfers overseas, even as a business here, doing our transfers between Singapore banks and Thailand, the, the money that we're losing on a day, daily basis is frightening. Mm -hmm. And you sit down at the end of the month and think, I could have employed somebody with all that money that's gone. Absolutely. So I suppose the question is, how is D-Money uh, going to revolutionize or change that? So the key thing to see here, and I think you've touched on a lot of hallmarks of the traditional banking system, which is um, it's expensive, uh, it's, you know, Not obscure. transparent. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. there's, you opaque. Know, obs it's opaque versus transparency. Yeah. And it's just overall very inefficient. You know, um, we're, we're talking about how expensive it is, but also in terms of the time it takes for you, you know, to go to the bank with the documentation, uh, your experience, the amount of time you're giving up in a day to carry out those transactions, um, and then the amount of time the system and the processes behind the scenes take to carry out the transactions further. All of it is very inefficient. It's very bloated. There's a lot of intermediaries involved in the process. And it's sort of built on uh, systems that they've had for half a century. Well, yes. And I think to a very large extent, modern day banking as we know it has always been carried out at the customer's expense. 
you know, and that's a lot to do with the fact that legacy technology and, and to be fair, modern day banking has gone through so many different iterations yes. and so many different eras that they've had to really adapt and they've done a great job at adapting to a certain point, right? But a lot of the systems we're employing today, um, like SWIFT, for example, started in the 1970s, right? Was, was introduced and developed in the, into the banking world in the 1970s. We're in 2022. Yeah. The world's changed maybe a little bit. Just a bit. <laughs> Just a bit. So a lot of the systems we're employing don't really work for us anymore. And I think what we're seeing very clearly is we're moving from a system of obscurity, complexity. It almost feels as, as if the system was designed to intimidate, Yeah. right? The jargon they use, the documentation that you need. Um, going, going to the bank is never a, yay, I'm going to the bank today. It's always, ugh, I have to go to the bank today. Well, right? in the past, we always used to sort of go cap in hand yeah. and talk to the manager. Well, there, and you hello. there you go. There you go. So everybody wants to know, you know, they've been watching this, uh, mm -hmm. is, is how is D-Money different from all that? Yeah. Um, well, D-Money, I would say, is a revolution. You know, it's part of the fintech revolution that's really using technology today, along with a fresh perspective. Okay, we are not encumbered by the legacy um, inheritance or, or a lot of the legacy values and attitudes and mindset that define modern day banking. We're coming in fresh, we see the pain points, uh, we're using technology to resolve it. And I think the, the result of that is a system that's transparent, right? At any given point. So if you were to transfer money with D-Money, I mean, you talked about an experience with another money transfer operator, traditional one. But with D-Money, you know upfront exactly what is going to be credited into the recipient's account overseas. Uh, you're paying a fraction of the cost at 125 baht. And uh, Tim, you know, that's something... That's like a fixed fee. Well, that's exactly, um, you know, what's so unique is we launched in the market in 2018 at a time when banks and money transfer operators were um, offering tiered pricing. The more you send, the more you pay technically it doesn't cost us more if you're sending more. Sure. Right? So we did away with all of that and we said, here's a flat fee. You send 1,000 baht or you send 800,000 baht, you pay 125 baht right now. You know, and we're the only company, only financial service provider that will guarantee that your money reaches within the next day. Right. You know. so, so, Mega, your customers mm -hmm. are going to be uh, people who want to send money overseas yes. or people who are sending money into Thailand or both? Well, currently, our, um, you know, through our app and through our branches, you can send money overseas. Okay. Part of our business is also working with uh, global operators to process uh, volumes and, and money into the country. So, I'm very excited, Tim, to share that within three years of our inception, we have uh, hit a milestone of processing over $2 billion. And we've processed over 2 million transactions. Okay, and now just to give you a bit of an idea with that kind of um, volume is prior to fintechs coming in, the standard cost would hover, standard cost of international money transfers would hover at 7 to 10%. We've brought that down to 2%. Okay, which means on a transfer volume, gross transfer volume of five, two, sorry, two billion, we've saved 5%, right? And that- Which is a lot of money. Which is a lot of money, it's $100 million, which will not only, you know, not only have we saved that from our customers, but benefits the Thai G GDP directly. So um, as FinTechs come in with our technology, with our perspectives, we're just offering a better service that's more affordable, that's more transparent and essentially puts control back in the user's hand, which I don't think has ever existed in the financial services. So I think it's important to say at this time, and a, a lot of people out there would be going through a lot of questions in their mind, but you are regulated by the Bank of Thailand. Mm. So Absolutely. you are part of the, the Thai financial system. Well, we are held to the same standards as every bank that operates in this country. We report to the same bodies, which is the Bank of Thailand, as well as the Anti-Money Laundering Office, AMLO. Um, yes, so there is no, you know, there's, 
no room for negotiation there. We are absolutely you know, held to the same critical standards as they are. Megan, a lot of people out there are thinking, well, hang on, this is so much cheaper. It sounds too good to be true. Mm -hmm. But what do you say to people who say, oh, there's something f fishy about this? Because it sounds like you're providing a better service mm -hmm. at a lower price. And usually that means that there's something going on. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, yeah, what's the catch? Well, I think ultimately it comes down to really understanding why you were being charged so much by banks in the first place. And that's really understanding how SWIFT works. Uh, like I mentioned, SWIFT is a very um, you know, traditional technology that started in the 1970s. And for money to move across borders, it would have to go through many intermediary banks and layers. And each layer would charge a commission or a fee. Ah, okay. That would not be visible to the end customer. Right. right? So everything was just bloated. Whereas with D-Money, we are working with like-minded partners around the world and banks around the world. We've cut out all the intermediaries with our technology and the processes that we have in place. And we're really passing those savings and that benefit to the end customer. So really, the, the old system w was so layered over such a long time. Mm -hmm. And then you added the latest technology and it sort of become bloated. Yes. And you've cut through a lot of that yes. bloating yes. and come up with a, a simpler system, mm -hmm. uh, which makes a lot of sense to me. But when I had a look at the, the charges, it's clearly much cheaper using D money to transfer money out of Thailand. Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly. So who are going to be the beneficiaries? Who are going to be your customers? The, the expat or the Thai person who's earning a bit of money they want to send overseas? Or what about big business? Can they use D money as well? Well, all of the above, Tim. Um, our service, I think, is applicable and beneficial to customers all across financial levels, as individuals, as well as businesses. So, um, you know, we, we've recently launched D-Money for Business, and most people may not be aware that businesses, or SMEs rather, are the most underserved market in the financial industry. <laughs> tell me about yeah. it. <laughs> tell me about it, Tim. <laughs> yeah, Why don't sure. you tell me? Share your experience. <laughs> yeah, well, I know, as I've been saying, uh, we suffer this bloating all the time when we do transfers. I um, mean, uh, Tiger, for example, is a Singapore company, and we get money uh, coming into there, and we send it over here to pay all our bills, and we receive money here in Thailand. We send it, and at the end of the month, I think, my goodness, where has that money gone? Yeah. And it's just vanishing into these, uh, th th this bloated system. Right. So, so, like, you know, we are very in favour of trying to simplify and uh, uh, narrow the, the path by which you can do these things because that's sort of the way that we've actually operated our business. So it's really refreshing to see somebody in the fintech industry that's doing something that's actually going to benefit the, the customers. Absolutely. I mean, that, that is at the ethos, the centre of everything we do. Um, but just to your point, as an SME, not only are you spending so much more um, in terms of the FX rates, the hidden fees and all of that, but so much of your cash flow and working capital is actually tied up in accounting for the days in advance that you need to send the money to make sure it re reaches you know, your, your, your vendors in time. Do you feel that frustration? Well, sure. We always wonder not only about the, the rates, but we always think, well, where does the money go for two or three days? It, there you go. It vanishes. Yes. And obviously the banks are using it to do their trading or whatever they do. But it is very frustrating, I think, for uh, whether you are a, a bar girl in Patti wanting to send money overseas or well, whether you're an SME or a larger business and you want to uh, do international trade, you are always looking for a better system. So what if I told you that now there is a platform that allows you for 449 baht to transfer a day before your payment is due because we have a next day guarantee and you don't have to lock up your cash flow, you know, trying to mitigate or manage those two or three and sometimes even seven days that it does take with the banking channel. How would that feel? That sounds fine to me. Right, and if you knew exactly what your recipient was going to get, so there is no surprise at the end or any further recipient deductions, which does happen when you use a banking channel. How would that be? Th that's good. <laughs> so, so Mega, I'm going to ask a question I'm sure a lot of people out there would be asking. 
which is okay. So the process is going to be cheaper with D money, mm -hmm. but are you making your money from higher commissions? Uh, you know, the, the FX trade, is that how you're making your money? Well, we're very transparent and upfront that our fees are flat fee, 125 baht for individual customers and 449 for um, business SME customers. And um, as I had mentioned earlier, Tim, uh, there, prior to the era of fintechs coming in and revolutionizing this space, the cost of cross-border payments was at anywhere from 7 to 10 percent. That's how bloated the margins are. Fintechs like D-Money are effectively bringing that down anywhere from 1 to 3 percent globally. And we are in that same range. So our margins are just that much, right? And we're very transparent where our fees are concerned. Okay. So on a day-to-day -day basis, wh what is going to be the typical customer of D-Money? Are they the, the small independent people or are they just transferring some money overseas? Or are they SMEs or bigger companies? Who, who are D-Money's customers? That's a great question. And I think um, it's safe to say that our customers are across the board. Um, one of the hallmarks of democratizing financial services is actually opening up to new audiences that would otherwise be excluded from financial s services, right? So um, with that being said, 10 almost 10% of transactions that take place on our platform are by those who would typically be excluded. Their occupations are listed as housemaids, security guards, okay. drivers, and, and they you know, typically make what we call micro transfers below 2,000 baht using any other formalized channel, they would never be able to do that because the fees and FX alone would eat that principal amount, right? So that's one set of customers um, who we see using our services. We have a very, very large um, percent of, you know, expats and professionals using this because ultimately it is a better service. It's easier to use and it just saves you a lot of money and time. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, SMEs across the board are using our services and they are seeing, I mean, we have some very, um, some very creative entrepreneurs who are using our service and comparing it, you know, they'll, they'll do half of their transaction, half of their payment through us and the other half using a banking service just to test it out. And I think overall we come out the winner <laughs> each time. So, Margaret, obviously everything that D-Money is at the moment is, uh, hasn't just happened overnight. Uh, I'd be interested to know how you got into this and how D-Money sort of uh, evolved. Yeah, that's a great story right there, Tim. Um, but, 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 we need this uh, Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll try my best. <laughs> so, essentially, Sawadee so Shop, which is the mother company of D-Money, uh, we were a telecoms company specializing in voice over internet protocol. Okay right, VOIP through our calling cards. And it was just um, very clear that globally the trajectory was for telecoms company to expand into becoming, or offering rather, remittance services okay. for the same customer base. And so seeing that, we approached the Bank of Thailand at a time when no such license existed and really worked hard together with them. And uh, yeah, in 2017, we were awarded awarded this license, and the rest is history. Okay. Say. Do you operate only in Thailand, or is D Money in other countries as well? So, as a customer-facing brand, D Money operates in Thailand, but we are connected globally to partners. And um, as I mentioned earlier, we are processing, um, you know, large percentage of payments coming into the country. But as a customer-facing brand, D-Money, is currently only in Thailand. Okay. For now. So, Mega, let's uh, now let the people who are interested about this find out a bit more. How can we find out a bit more about D-Money? Well, we're all over the internet, really. <laughs> you can go to our website, dmoney.com. Um, That's D -double -E? D -double -E money money dot com. Com. Yep. And on on, on the first page itself, you, you, know, you will get to see um, our rates, you know, what we charge, and if you're interested in doing a bit of a simulated money transfer, you can calculate it right then and there. Um, follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, of course, 
And I just want to say that, you know, using, when you make a transfer with D-Money, you're not just using another financial service. You're really part of a movement, part of a revolution that is here to put you back in control of your money. We start today with international money transfers. There's a lot more in the pipeline, so follow us and, and stay tuned. Well, it's a very interesting story, especially to a person who does transfer money, not a lot, but also with our company, uh, it's become an issue. And we welcome uh, any changes to the, the fintech landscape. And uh, congratulations on D-Money. It's actually a very exciting project. Thank you for talking to us today. And we'd urge people to, if you want to find out more, go to the website or to the contacts you can see underneath. And we thank you, Maga, for coming in today. Well, thank you, Tim, for having me here today. It was a pleasure. Okay. Thank and you. we'll have more, of course, on the Tiger. And I think you'll be seeing a bit more about D-Money as well. Thanks. Thank you.